am Leslie Maddox and I like to get into the nitty gritty of homeschooling because I believe it's the details that can make the difference between a good and a bad day and affect the levels of peace and confidence in your home. Today I'll be sharing with you a mid-year update uh, for my fourth grader, how his school year is going so far. Since he's my oldest, I've had more time with him to homeschool and I feel like I've got somewhat of a handle on his learning style and the things that he likes and doesn't like. And um, so I'm, I'm better able to customize his learning. Uh, I'm still figuring that out with my younger two because <laughs> all of my kids are, are pretty different from each other. And so, but my fourth grader, I feel like I've, I've got somewhat of a handle on um, what he needs and what works for him. So there really haven't been that many changes. Uh, one change I've made is with his morning work. Every morning, uh, both my older boys have a morning work binder that they work from with calendaring and some copy work. And for my oldest, I added a mental warm-up section to his morning work binder. Um, I did that because he tends to rush through his work. He doesn't enjoy... Um, I guess you could say he's not a natural academic that he loves to sit and learn and read and write and, and those he just doesn't love those things. He doesn't have the patience for it, I guess. And that affects his schoolwork where he's very bright but he makes careless mistakes and uh, rushes through. And I try to tell him that, hey, I know you're in a hurry to be done but when you're trying to work through things that fast and um, you're not paying attention to the details, you're actually taking longer because guess what? You're gonna go back and correct those details and you're gonna get a talk from mommy about why this is wrong and how we need to work on it. So it ends up taking way longer. And that, and he understands intellectually that slowing down would help him actually get done faster. Uh, but he hasn't, I think it's just difficult for him to slow himself down. So I thought that if I gave him a little bit of a mental warm up, something like a word search or a logic problem, thought if I required him doing at least one of those in the morning, that'll get him to slow down a little bit. And I told him that, I, I didn't hide it from him, what, what I was trying to do, that it's good practice and slowing down because you're, you're not gonna be able to complete those pages without slowing down and thinking it through. And uh, I feel like it's helped. It's one of those things that's difficult to, to be certain <laughs> how much it's helped or not, but I feel like it has helped. Uh, and so, I still have to remind him sometimes to slow down, but like with his math especially, he is um, being more careful with his math. Speaking of math, uh, we're using Matthew C. I switched over from teaching textbooks from last year, and he started off with Matthew C. in first and second grade. For third grade, I switched him to teaching textbooks. I like the idea of me not having to grade anything or really teach anything, and I thought he would enjoy it. Uh, I was really wrong in that. Um, teaching textbooks, you know, he was doing really well with it. Uh, he was getting great grades and seemed to be confident. Uh, but then, so I thought it was going really well last year. And then um, I started seeing some problems and some struggles and he came to me and him not understanding something. So I started paying more attention to it instead of just Go do your math. Start paying attention to what was really happening. And one of the thing, one of the problems I saw was that he does not enjoy the. It's not that he doesn't enjoy. He has a hard time paying attention to the little lecture on the screen. Uh, he's not an auditory learner, like I said, and um, he needs to more. He needs to interact more with the learning. So I had to change it up and have him read the lesson in the workbook. I'm glad I got the workbook. I had to have him read the lesson in the workbook to pay attention to what was what the new learning was. And sometimes I had to sit and read it with him. And there's new learning every day with teaching textbooks. It's not like Matthew C where, where um, like once a week you have a new concept and you work, you practice that. Um, it's every day there's something new. And uh, so I had to change that up for him that he had to read from the textbook uh, but then, since I was there with him um, and s watched him do some of the problems, I saw something kind of strange, is that while he was very confident when he came to me and says, oh, I got 100, you know, on the assignment today, um, when I actually watched him working through it, he did not have that same confidence. 
and I realized it was because while there's there's a new little concept taught every day but there were very few practice problems for that new concept just like a couple and there'd be over 20 problems for him to do and only a few very few of them very low percentage of them would be over that new concept and not only that they weren't the first couple of problems so he'd read a page uh talking about this new concept us discussing it working through the practice problem on there and then when he go to do the problems with that lesson the first couple would be about something else that he learned previously so that was required kind of a context switch it always kind of caught him off guard and me too sitting there watching it because we're just been spending all this time looking at this one thing and now they're talking about something else and then we'd eventually get to the problems covering that was meant for practice for this lesson but since he push that information out of his brain to cover these other things, he had to go back and look at the lesson. And then there'd only be a couple of them. There wasn't enough practice, I felt, to cement the learning for that day. Uh, so when he'd continue on to what were supposed to be, intended to be review problems over previous lessons, since he never really learned them well to begin with, it was like new learning again. And you'd have to flip back and see what was that about so i thought that the lessons were all structured really poorly and he's he's a smart kid and he's good at math uh, but i guess for a new learner whenever you're learning something new this was not um helping the kids along through the learning there wasn't enough practice and i don't care what anybody says when it's math take this from an engineer and someone who did really well in math in high school and college um you need to practice uh concepts it's not enough to just for kids to understand how multiplication works. You need to practice that a lot. You can understand that three times five is 15 and, and how that happens and skip counting, but actually implementing that and writing it down and doing it quickly, it's, it's another thing. You have to practice. It has to be practiced over and over again. Um, because when it's not, it's like every time they're doing it, it's like it's doing it almost for the first time. And it's stressful. It turns to learning stressful and it turns to practice stressful. Uh, so we could not wait to dump teaching textbooks. So I told him, I was like, we're going we're gonna to finish this up but we're changing for next year. And we just went back to Matthew C. Um, I did change how we use Matthew C this year. And that's what I wanna talk about today really, which is that I feel like that's worked out well. Matthew C has, uh, for each lesson, there's new learning every week. And then, or we do it once a week. And then there's like three worksheets that are meant for practice for that concept covered uh, to help them cement that learning with a word couple of word problems. And then uh, I think three worksheets that are systematic review. That is not just this lesson, but review over previous lessons. And so for this year, what I had him do, and I did this with my middle son last year, and I'm having him do it again this year, is every day I have them do one lesson practice worksheet and one systematic review worksheet. Uh, so he still gets to say about the same number of problems that he did with teaching textbooks. Uh, last year, but I feel like the learning the learning is more effective and more natural because he gets for real an opportunity to practice the new concept and then to review previous learning. And he's doing really well for that uh, with that. I feel that like he's confident in his learning and his math skills now and it's a true confidence. Teacher textbooks gave a false confidence because He'd struggle through the lesson, get a good grade, but you know, a lot of the times a good grade was because uh, teaching textbooks lets them get problems wrong and try again, uh, and then but but will mark it as correct. So he may have gotten you know several of the problems wrong the first time around, had to go back through and struggle through it until he got it right. But then the grade would come up and it would show like he got everything right. And uh, so that was a false confidence. And it was like, he looked at the gray thinking, well, I don't know how I got that, but hey, I'm happy about it. So, um, you know, that didn't work for us. Um, I feel like he's got much stronger math skills now working through Matthew C. And I'm sure there's other curriculum that, curricula that would uh, give 
similar results but we used Matthew C in the past it really worked for him and it's working for him this year so that's going really well an area that I was um, not sure how it was going to go this year were with grammar and um, writing the IEW resources that we're using and I can tell you now about midway through that I now have a deep and abiding love for IEW <laughs> they it it turns out that the resources are just right for my fourth grader and I also like the philosophy behind IEW which is to help your kids a lot to teach from the known to the unknown to mostly work with known and and just a little bit of unknown uh, until the unknown becomes easy and that's where that what's his name Andrew Poudois the instructor the, the word he uses that until it's easy for them um, and then you can move on to a new concept and uh you know, all that's just really worked out. I love the philosophy behind it. It took some getting used to for me. Um, the idea of, first of all, helping your kids as much as you can, that you can't help them too much. And, and the instructor, his philosophy behind that, his thoughts behind that are that kids generally like to, if they can do something by themselves, they like to do it by themselves. And they'll tell you when they don't need help anymore. And you know, there's always some kids who, who uh, might take advantage of help unnecessarily, but um, but for the most part, I find that true with my kids. That when they really don't need the help, they don't ask for. They want to do it by themselves, and to just kind of help them along. So it's been really good. Fix it grammar. My son loves the story that you do one sentence every day from a story, and you mark it up and correct it, and then you rewrite it. And there's there's no testing of the four parts of speech. They have cards that they can access at any time to tell them um, how to identify verbs and helping verbs and different types of, types of nouns and the who, which clause and all those things. They have cards that they can refer to at any time. And I've seen that um, as time has gone by, he refers to those cards less and less and can much more quickly mark the parts of speech and make his corrections. Uh, so that's been so he is learning and then for writing I was really worried that that was gonna take a long a lot of effort for me uh, That it will take a long time every day to do it and it's really not it's super easy I had to understand that when I edit his um, Paragraphs uh, The instructor makes it clear that you know mommies we should just edit mark it mark the fixes without a lecture, just like a real editor would do. Uh, because then when they're rewriting, rewriting the paragraph, um, they are still uh, taking in the correction. They're, they're still taking that in and processing that and that will still help them. Uh, before we get to that editing point, they've had to do a lot of work on their own and writing a keyword outline and um, using different dress ups and adding a clause. They, they've had to actively do all that learning already. And so then we edit it and then they rewrite it and they kind of take it in the final product. Uh, so he's been really liking that. I was really concerned about writing and um, it's turned out to be much easier than I thought it would be. And we did end up letting go of something this year with my fourth grader. I start off with the year with him uh, you doing Code Ninjas and it's a franchise, kids go and they set up kind of like a dojo where they go through different levels and they learn different programming languages and, and they go each week for, uh, for what you pay, you get two hours a week and it could be one time for two hours or two separate one hour uh, spots that they can go to and they work through different, um, their own proprietary, Curricula, curriculum for different programming languages and it starts off with Scratch. So, uh, which is a programming language for kids, is a graphical where they move little like blocks around that represent uh, different uh, types of code and uh, learn how to use those blocks in that way and setting variables and, and that kind of thing. So we start off doing that. now. I am a computer engineer and I made a living as a software developer so I know how to program and yes I could sit and teach him that. 
but I thought it would be fun for him to do it in a class environment with other kids that are interested in the same thing. And that ended up being a big fail for us. Uh, part of the reason was just the particular location that we chose. It's, you know, it probably won't be helpful to go into the, all the particulars, but I just felt like the business was not run well and it was very frustrating for us. Uh, there were a lot of problems with just how the business was run and there wasn't, um, I felt like there was no urgency from them to fix things. The other problem was that it wasn't, um, it wasn't what the website communicated, not the location that we went to. On the website, it looks like it's all very interesting and and um, like there's an energy there and that the tutors are um, kind of more engaged with the kids. And, and there were times that my son asked questions and they completely ignored him and he'd come out and ask me and I'm like, and I had to tell him in front of the tutors who are there paid to do this, I had to tell him in front of them, these are the guys that you ask questions of. They are getting paid to answer your questions. Uh, that is why they are here. So don't feel bad about asking them any question that you need to ask. That is their job. And I felt like they were uh, more responsive after that. And really, I encourage you, if you're sending your kids to a class, at least the first couple, if it's a drop-off situation where you can drop them off and then come back later and get them, I encourage you to at least stay for a couple of times and make sure that it's what they're, that they are what they're presenting themselves to be and that you're getting your money's worth. Because my plan had been to drop them off and then go work like edit videos or whatever somewhere nearby. Um, during the, while he was there, but I wanted to see what was going on and, and how it all worked. And I'm glad I did, um, because I could see that there were issues. Uh, one time in particular, um, one of the tutors unplugged their router. He said the, he said that the internet was too slow and the lady at the front desk was like, well, I don't know what he was talking about. I thought it was just fine, but he took it upon himself to go and unplug the router and he put it in the fridge he said it was too hot cool it down and we had just gotten there so my son hadn't had an opportunity to log in online to his account which meant that he couldn't work while that router wasn't uh wasn't plugged in and then they couldn't get it to work again <laughs> so for how i was in there watching i was getting angrier and angrier this was the last straw for me um that it took a half hour before they were online again and before he could get started and we had to go so he I told him just do your half hour and we're gonna go uh, but then I heard them telling a parent who had not been there and came in to pick up their kid they told the parent that the kid their child said something about not being able to work and they told the parent oh it was about 10 minutes and I was like looking at my watch so I knew that was not true that was the last straw for me on my way out, I told them that I wanted to cancel my membership. Um, and also for what we were paying, uh, it was, we paid, it was over, it was over $200 a month um, for two hours a week. And for that kind of money, I felt like we could have hired a tutor if I would wanted to. I could have hired a tutor and um, him gotten one-on-one -on -one help, even just for a half hour. Um, and that would have been more effective. You know, since he has me, instead we just went back to the scratch workbook that I'd purchased at Costco earlier last year and we've been working out of that and it has been a much better experience. And I feel like it's more effective because he can come and ask me questions and I'll answer him. <laughs> and then he works on the problems and, and kind of changes them up. There's a written portion to it which really helps with him that he has to stop and think and answer the questions about how things work. And then he can play with the program he's creating uh, and um, play around with it and change it and, and play with it with his brothers and they'll come and see it and they can play with it. And uh, I feel like that's much more, much more effective learning for him. On the other end of the spectrum, something that has worked out way better than I thought it would has been Cub Scouts. So my older two boys are in Cub Scouts this year. It's I have an agree agreement with my husband that he is handling the Cub Scout stuff. I will help in small ways if I need to, but that's kind of his baby. I feel like I've got enough on my plate. And so he's the one involved with Cub Scouts. My husband's been loving uh, being involved with Cub Scouts because 
Uh, he gets to use some of his skills as a teacher. He was a teacher for 12 or 13 years, so he gets to do that. He gets to be involved with something that's just him and the boys. And um, he's very extroverted, and, and so he's been loving. I haven't had to force him into it. He's been loving doing Cub Scouts. And Cub Scouts actually, I feel like it's filling in some holes for us. Um, things that I wouldn't necessarily cover that that is being covered in Cub Scouts. So like, in order to get their different badges. So like my first grader was recently doing a, um, like a fire safety badge. So we visited a um, fire station and that was very educational. We all went to that. So that was very educational um, for all of us. And then there was a number of things he had to do for the for that badge, you know, now a couple of the things were things we we're doing in copy work already and and had knowing phone numbers and home address. But then they also went through, you know, drawing up a, a, a map of our house and, and how to get out if there was a fire uh, in our home. And they practiced that and the different escape routes and where to meet and, and that kind of thing. So see, that's something that I kind of knew in the back of my head that we needed to do at some point. But now with Cub Scouts, because my first grader was doing that, uh, my husband was doing that with my first grader, they, all the kids participated and they all got to learn those those things and, and something that we really needed to know. Um, there, uh, there's camping and trips and, and also just hanging out with with their different dens and, and making friends that way. And so it's been, it has exceeded our expectations. I hope you enjoyed this peek into our school year so far. Uh, I also have another video sharing with you how I'm doing science for this year, how we're doing in science and particularly my fourth grader, what my plans are for him for the rest of the school year for science. Check that out and check out my website, lesliemaddox.com, where I have for you a free printable that I'm using with my fourth grader for science. And go ahead and go download that. I hope it's helpful to you. Uh, be on the lookout for further videos, sharing with you uh, updates and how my preschooler and my first grader are doing. And uh, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.